The following is a special presentation of WYMT TV. Here at Taylor Stadium, the game is tied at 17. Union and Cumberland heading into overtime. Russell takes the handoff, cuts around the left side, and he could go. Nobody touches him virtually. Scott Free into the end zone. The extra point is good. Union leads this 24 to 17 in overtime. Cumberland comes right back him on. Broadnax feels the pressure in the pocket. He's dangerous when he scrambles, and he does exactly what Russell did. Into the same portion of the end zone. Touchdown, Cumberland. This for the tie. It's up, and it's no good. The brass lantern will return to Barberville. 24-23, Union in overtime. Some victories are sweeter than others, but all losses are just as bitter. Uh, we were losing last year, and that was another loss, but it was extremely painful. And uh, for us mountain folk, it means a little more, I guess, uh, to win a game against mountain folk. So it, it was about as bad a loss as you could have. You know, the last two games have been decided at the end of the game on uh, extra point or field goal kicks. Last year, went in overtime. A year before, we won it. Uh, uh, in the last seconds on a, on a field goal. So, you know, it doesn't matter what team's better, which team has more talent, whatever. Uh, when come in Union to get together, it's going to be a war. This will be the third battle for the Brass Lantern, and Union is riding a two-game win streak over Cumberland. But the Indians still hold the season series edge seven games to five. This year, the Bulldogs have only won once, while the Tribe is four and four. So this is the biggest game for both teams this season. It's one of them classic ones. It's a... Uh rough and uh, there's going to be a lot of hitting. It doesn't matter what the record is between the two teams. Uh, they can be having a winning season, we could be down, we can be up or they can be down. It, it, it won't even matter. When this game comes down, it's going to come down to the last quarter. Birchnall Field is the site for the game, but Cumberland has won four times on Union's campus. A fifth has them taking the hardware south for the very first time. Yeah, it's something to play for, you know. Heck, we don't have a lot to play for now this year, but, uh, you know, we do. We have the brass land here. We've had it for the last two years, and, you know, we'd like to keep it here. And, and Cumberland would like to take it back home with them, so it adds a little extra incentive to this ball game. but you don't need much incentive when you put Union and Cumberland together. The only reason they have it is because we didn't have a case big enough for it yet. So we're getting that built, and we're going to bring it back home so we can put it in the case. So we thought we'd let them hold on to it for a little bit. It's Cumberland versus Union, the battle for the brass lantern. You can see it all next, right here live on WYMT. Today's game is sponsored by Double Quick, Southeast Marine, Cardinal Chevrolet, Lexington Diagnostics, Arby's, First National Bank of Corbin and Williamsburg, and your Toyota dealers. Welcome to Birchnaw Field, John Lewis along with Chip Tillett. Chip, it seems like the weather always plays a part. Uh, some sun came out earlier this morning when we were here, but now it's starting to cloud over and looks like we could have rain for the game. Well, I tell you what, if it, it rains for the game, that'll mean it's a typical Cumberland Union kind of atmosphere. They always seem to play in wet, damp weather. We got a little bit. The field's not too wet right now. If the weather holds off, it should be fine. Plus, that's football weather, John. Cumberland 4-4. Four and four. Union picks up their first win last week. And we're going to see really two different teams than what people have used to seeing uh, for the first part of the season. Well, Union has completely changed everything around. They've gone to a wide open spread passing offense. Rich Johnson will talk about that more a little bit later on. Cumberland, they're going to pound you with the Mid-South Conference's leading rusher, Randy Freeman. Union has given up yards on the ground this year, so that could be a matchup that we'll watch. This is the third battle of the Brass Lantern. For more on that, let's go over to Rich Johnson. Rich. All right, thanks guys. I'm down the sideline with the Brass Lantern Trophy. Now, Cumberland College has never won this trophy. Union has won both meetings when they've had the trophy. The Brass Lantern Trophy sponsored by Gatliff Coal Company. Now, if Cumberland College wants to take the trophy back to Williamsburg for the first time, head coach Dan Haley says they need to do three things. First of all, they need to establish long scoring drives. They also need to keep Union quarterback Chris Harris from getting outside of the pocket. And also, they can't allow Harris to throw deep down the middle of the field. Now, the Union offense has changed since the beginning of the year. First four games of the year, they're only averaging 240 yards a game. The last three games, they've averaged 385 yards per game of total offense. Now, how have they done that? Well, they have a new wide-open offense that's similar to the Hal Mummy offense. And the person that's triggering that offense is freshman quarterback Chris Harris. He took over for Sean Wollum, who started the season at quarterback. Wollum now a wide receiver. Now, we talked to both these coaches earlier this week about the offense, and they have these comments. 
Uh, so we had to make some type of change just to try to make it through this season. And it's been very productive, and our young men are really enjoy running it. You know, we're throwing one game, we threw the ball 47 times, so we're a lot like how Mom at Kentucky, I guess. But we're averaging over 30 passes a game, and, and it's helped our running game out, and, and our guys are enjoying it. So we got some confidence again in what we're doing offensively. The thing that concerns us is they, they made a change in their offense about uh, three weeks ago and uh, went to a spread offense, basically uh, shotgun formation. And uh, they run a lot of athletes down the field and their quarterback now is an athlete and it uh, gets real problems uh, for the defense because they have a bunch of ways to throw the ball and then they can bust you up the middle with a run. As for Cumberland, on offense, they'll turn to senior running back Randy Freeman. He currently leads the Mid-South Conference in yards rushing with 937. He's also scored 13 touchdowns. We'll have a little bit more on him at halftime. But for now, that's it from the sideline. Now back up to you guys. All right, Rich, we'll be checking in with you during the game. We're back with the kickoff live from Birchnaw Field, Union College versus Cumberland College, right after this. Introducing the all-new Troy-built Tipperback line. Now recycle leaves, twigs, even branches and limbs like this as you walk. Plus, it's backed by a seven-year warranty only from Troy-built. The secret is a powerful vacuuming shredder and auto-feed chipper that handles branches up to two inches thick. Plus, all your yard wastes are chopped up, reduced, and bagged automatically. So stop struggling. Discover the new line of Troy-built Chipperbacks at your dealer today. Visit Frazier's Farmer Supply in Whitesburg. If you've ever needed one good reason to buy a boat, Tracker's got 500. That's right, buy any one of 15 Bass Tracker or Nitro packages and we'll give you a $500 Bass Pro Shops gift certificate absolutely free. Pick out your new boat and choose from thousands of products. Anything from the famous Bass Pro Shops catalogs. What are you waiting for? Get on down to your Tracker dealer now. Come see Rex and Dave at Southeast Marine in Corbin, 528-2628. We are back live at Birchnaw Field in Barberville, Kentucky, Union College and Cumberland College getting ready to kick things off. The rain holding off so far, Chip Tillett. Looks like we're going to end for a good game. Of course, Union winning their first game last week. Cumberland College 4-4, four and four, always a big rivalry. It is a big rivalry. You know, they've played already this last year, the past couple years. The battle for the Brass Lantern the last two. Cumberland leads the season series 7-5 at Union. They've won two in a row, looking to make it three straight. You saw that big trophy from the Gatliff Coal Company, the Brass Lantern. They want that to stay in Barberville. Guess what? The Tribe, they want to take it back down to Williamsburg. Union, though, they're set to receive. They want the ball first. They want to show off that new offense. Well, we'll get an early look at that new offense. It'll be freshman Mike Donnelly kicking off for Cumberland College, back deep to receive. For Union is Todd Hudson and Don Williams. You gotta, you gotta think that early on Union wants to establish the offense. They are still working out the kinks in the wide open offense. It's not something that's easy to grasp. Field position is always important. If you can get a good kick return early on, that always helps. And it looks like it's uh, fumbled. Uh, he has a problem there on the uh, goal line, so that one's going to be. Uh, Taking in for a touchback, so Union College will come back out on the 20-yard line, and we're going to get a look at this, what Tuck Willem, Coach Tuck Willem, calls the Howl Mummy offense. Well, they had a chance to see an offense like this earlier this year, Iowa Westland playing them, and they were up the whole game. Westland scores three touchdowns in the fourth quarter, come back and beat them the week they had a bye before the Georgetown game. Tuck said they were keying on Dana Overton, their star running back, who is actually out for this game with a knee sprain. So we will see Todd Hudson in there replacing him. And you've got a change at quarterback with Chris Harris coming in, the true freshman. We're going to see what he does because Sean Woolham, their former starting quarterback, is now an H-back. Well, Harris under center here. And he's looking to pass already. So this is the Hal Mummy offense, the quick passes. But that one no good there. The intended receiver is Lloyd Dollar. Lloyd Dollar came out last week. He is a tailback. By trade, usually, he's had some problems holding on to the ball. You saw a little bit of that on the kickoff. Tuck would ideally like him to be a tailback, but he, he's had problems holding on to the ball, so they make him a receiver where your hands are pretty important, too. But he had a couple of big touchdown catches last week. They moved him to receiver. He has speed to burn, and he's a great talent. It's just whether or not he can hold on to the ball. Harris going to work this one out of the shotgun. He's got a receiver open down there, and it looks like he was maybe pushed out of bounds. Are they going to call it a completion? They will. Looks like that, Quali Rolak. Absolutely. That is number 80, Quali Rolak, the senior out of Mariana, Florida. 
and he caught uh, the touchdown in last week's win over at North Greenville, which was Union's first win of the season. I tell you what, this kind of offense, they're going immediately to the no huddle. Harris pointing out his receivers, checking off the line of scrimmage. You got the first down yardage. That's exciting football. That's what the fans like to see. Tuck says the players like to play in this kind of system. Harris under center showing a three wide receiver. The pitch now, and he looks like he's got some room here. He's across the 50, down to the 40, and taken down at the 35-yard line. That is number 10, Todd Hudson, who is supposed to be a star this year. Well, I tell you what, Dana Overton, their, their running back, former Division I player, originally signed with the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. Didn't work out there, transferred to San Diego State. Said some politics were involved in that situation. Wound up backing up George Jones, who is currently with the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's got a sprained knee. Todd Hudson had over 100 yards last week when Overton went down. He looks like good, but everybody split out as a wide receiver now. One, two, three, four, five. And Harris, of course, working from the shotgun here. And he's going to, looks like he's going to look right there. He's got a receiver for a minimal gain there. That is Dwayne Crenshaw. He is the backup tailback listed on their depth chart, but I tell you what, they're going to put everybody out in the pass patterns. Well, this is a, a team that really needed something to go offensively. Uh, of course, the uh, heartbreaker they had at Iowa Wesleyan where they gave up so many unanswered points. It looked like they had the game won, so they figured maybe we need to do something like that. Of course, Iowa Wesleyan, the former Hal Mummy team. Harris in the shotgun again. Boy, this team really likes to pass right now, but it looks like they're going to hand off here. The draw play, that is number 38, Dwayne Crenshaw. And, boy, he thought he had it there, and he is down about the 20-yard line. I tell you what, John, you've seen this offense work if you've watched the University of Kentucky, and when you split the players out like that and go for the draw, it really works. It's really effective. And Dwayne also an excellent blocking back, too, but he's starting to get the, his number called right now. They've got him back in the backfield as a one-back set. What they can do out of this set is fake to him and throw for the end zone. You might see him do something like that here on the next couple plays. Showing three wide receivers here. This is Harris, and he has, oh, what a great catch. That is number two, Tyrone Rim, and he is down inside the 10-yard line. So, boy, Union really marching the ball. This is what they needed to do to establish this offense early on. I tell you what, John, when you're talking about an offense, they've only been playing in this for a few weeks. They don't look like they've been playing it for a couple weeks. They are taking it right down on Cumberland and, and just marching it down. All effective plays. A great catch by Tyrone Ream there. Uh, they look good. He led the Bulldogs with receptions back in 96. He had 15. And uh, Union huddling up now. Cumberland College, they really need a defensive stop here on first and 10 with the ball on the 10-yard line. This is the area of the field where this offense may be the least effective. Sometimes they run into a little problem, but look at that. Quarterback draw for Harris, and he is in for the touchdown. Union gets on the board first. It is 6-0. The cannons go off, and the crowd really loves that. Now, Union, they have established that offense. What better way to do it than a drive like that all the way down for the touchdown on the quarterback draw? John, no problems with the effectiveness there. Well, basically what they did, everybody split out. You've got the linebackers and defensive line looking for pass, dropping back into coverage. Harris takes it into the offense easy. That's something that Coach Dan Haley was worried about because he is an athlete. Chris Harris is the freshman. He looked good there. Tim Philpott wearing number 68, the kicker out of Bell County, normally 27, boots it through the upright, and just like that, 12.48 left in the first half. Look at that, first quarter. That's right, it is 7-0 Union College. We're back after this. Some days at the office can be very rough. Or sometimes just when you're enjoying a friendly game with the guys, you can suffer a nagging sports injury. Lexington Diagnostic Center has a new MRI machine that's ideal for orthopedic and sports-related injuries. It's a teammate of their patient-friendly open MRI machine. So if your doctor orders an MRI, ask to come to Lexington Diagnostic Center. We'll get you back at the game. We might talk with a country draw. We might greet you with a high on. But be a friend, they don't make you so. We're just what you need when you're on the go. Hey, 
And we are back as Union College gets ready to kick off. Cumberland College looking to answer that touchdown. 7-0 Union leads. Back deep to receive for Cumberland will be number three, Eddie Robinson, and number 33, Chris Morrison. John, now Cumberland's in a position. Union has taken it and just driven it right down the field with ease. They've got to come out and do something offensively. They want to get the ball to their big running back, run some time off the clock because it took no time at all to score there. Chris Morrison, a little trouble on the handle, but he picks it up. Looking for room, he is down on the sideline there and pushed out of bounds by number eight, that is Devin Roach. Devin, so Devin Roach is, is a linebacker by trade. He's been actually pushed out of the starting position, and uh, he's one of their catalysts last year. He's been pushed out by senior Andre Washington, actually leads the Bulldogs in tackles this season, and Washington has really been a player that stepped up this year. Roach is not starting, and it's because of Washington. The Union defense now gets a chance to stop Randy Freeman. Another freshman at quarterback, it's Patrick Wiggins out of Sewanee, Georgia. He gets the handoff here to number five with some running room there. That is Randy Freeman. Of course, Randy was a Mid-South Conference Player of the Week. Last week, he had a game-high 157 yards on 19 carries. He only needs, uh, going into this game, needed 27 yards to reach the 1,000 mark for the season. So they really count on Randy Freeman to grind this ball out for the Cumberland College Indians. Well, when you face an offense like this that's so explosive as we just saw in the first drive, you really want to keep that offense off of the field because if they can score in the little amount of time that they did, you don't want them on the field that much. Cumberland College working out of the eye here. The pitch to the guy who's dotting the eye, that is Randy Freeman. And he breaks a tackle and he is down on the 40 or the 35 yard line. And that's got probably going to call in for a measurement unless they're going to go ahead and give him the first down on that. They got but the first down on that one. They're going to move the change run. on that. A great run by Randy Freeman with a good second effort. First and 10, the ball now on the 26 yard line. A nice pitch out and a good block from his blocking back. Cumberland College trying to establish their, themselves as they try to get into a uh, into an offensive pattern here. They're going to run out of the eye again, showing uh, wide receivers on both ends. The uh, handoff here, that is number 34, Jeremy Simpson, a former Mr. Football. And he gets a gain of about five on that play. And we bring up second and five, the ball on the 35-yard line. He's out of Lincoln County. It's kind of a situation, you know, whatever happened to. Well, he's alive and well and playing for Cumberland College. But you would think when you were Mr. Football, you'd be the feature back. He's really not. He, he's had some struggles. He's playing today starting at fullback. But the guy they're looking to is number five, Randy Freeman, who does, as you said before, have 973 yards rushing. He certainly would like to go over the 1,000-yard mark against their arch rivals, the Union Bulldogs. Second and six now, the pitch again to Freeman looking for room. Breaks a couple of tackles down at the 40-yard line, maybe a little bit past. We'll give him the 42-yard line there. And Freeman just continues to rack up yards, short as they are, but like you said, he only needs about 27 to reach 1,000, and he's working on that right now. I think more importantly, they're working toward the end zone to answer Union's touchdown. A couple of, a couple of nice moves there. A faded tackle by Randall Tex Cobb, number 52. Out of Leslie County, he did a good job beating him. He tried to make an ankle tackle and just didn't work. I, I don't think Randy Freeman's the kind of running back you can ankle tackle. He's a, he's and you a don't, pretty big guy. And you don't tackle him high either. You've got to get him good. Patrick Harris going to be under center again. They're going to run out of the eye again, and they're going to have to take a timeout. Look like a little bit of confusion in the backfield there. They've, they're staring at a third and four here. They've moved the ball pretty effectively, but not quite as well as Union did on that first drive. You certainly got to make sure you, you get your signals right. Well, we've got a timeout on the field. We'll be back after this. Union leads 7-0. Why do I keep taking the plunge? Really, darling, how else am I going to get this hot, tasty au jus onto all this tender, juicy roast beef? Arby's French Dip Sub fulfills all my needs. I can even get it with Swiss if I'm in the mood. It is true love. And best of all, it doesn't require a prenuptial agreement. You can go anywhere and get filled up, but you can only get the French Dip Sub at Arby's. The automotive world's got a new point of reference for quality and value. Ford Taurus, America's best-selling car for the fifth straight year. It's got more horsepower than Camry or Accord, 13 standard features you can't even get on Chevy Lumina, and not even Dodge Intrepid has more room. What does it all mean? We'll get right to the point. There's more to a Ford. 
now, you'll get even more out of your Ford. Get $2,000 cash back on Ford Taurus. Just visit your best quality Ford dealer today. We're back live now. Patrick Wiggins under center with a three-back set here. And the play-action fake here. He's going to pass, and oh, Randy Freeman just dropped that one. Tented receiver a, a little bit behind, and that would have been a great catch. And still, if he'd caught it, it would have still been a little short because they were right there to pounce on upon him. Now, Union's defense has done their job. I tell you what, Union's defense, their problems have centered on offense this year. They've really got a, a pretty good defense. The problem is the offense early on couldn't move the ball. And especially from last year, they had one of the best defenses in the country. They've got a great defensive secondary. You've got a punt situation. This is near midfield, but they won't fake it. They'll go Union with a pretty good rush. Number three gets in there. It's short. They will just let it bounce. That's Peter. And that one down at the 30-yard line. So that's going to bring up first down for Union College again. And if they establish themselves, they've already established themselves on the offense, and we're going to see more passing. Boy, uh, two different kinds of offenses we saw there just on the first couple of drives. Uh, we saw Union College are airing it out today, something they've not done, and they had, were rather effective with it with a touchdown in Cumberland College running the ball, but Union's defense holds. I tell you what, what they've done is they've got their crowd involved in the game early on so far. Their team is excited, and they've got the early lead, a little momentum. They've got trips now to the right. See if Chris Harris and the boys can do it again on the second possession or if Cumberland can adjust. It's hard when you're facing an offense like this because you don't see it a lot. That's true. 9.52 left here in the first quarter. He's got a receiver there, Chris Harris does. That is Todd Hudson, and he is down. Looks like inside the 35-yard uh, or the 45-yard line. They look like they're going to measure that right around the chains. Nope, they won't measure it. They'll just go ahead and give it to them. They'll go ahead and give them the benefit of the doubt on that one. Union continuing to march the ball here. 9.44 left in the first quarter. And they continue to go out of the shotgun. And a lot of people think when you play an offense like this, you can't control the ball. That's not true because the throws you make are pretty safe throws. They're conservative throws, even though you're running four or five wide receivers out. I'm not a whole lot of deep throws. And then you can do the draw to keep the defense honest. And really, you know, you pick up four or five yards each time, you're going to move the ball down the field effectively. And that's exactly what they do, the draw there to uh, Todd Hudson. And Union College, they still drive. Union College has also changed their helmets this year. They've gone to a little bit of a San Francisco 49ers look, and it's a really good look. They've got the, the orange jerseys, the black pants on today, as everyone can see on TV. That's a good thing about color television. We're not black and white today. Harris under center again. Gets it out to, that is number 88, Kenny Haymond. And there you see the helmets there, the, uh, as you said, the San Francisco look, and they're all installing an almost San Francisco-like offense. Lots of passes. I tell you what, they're going to the fullback, too, to keep the, the defense honest because a little change of pace, a little bigger guy, harder to bring down, Dwayne Crenshaw, a huge guy. That's good. I called number 88. That was number 38, Dwayne Crenshaw, of course, the senior out of Pasioma, California. He's 2-1, 230. He's been getting the call. They call him an excellent blocking back, So, but what we've seen so far in these drives Looks like it's been an excellent uh, running back, too. That one just short of the first down. That looks like that's going to bring up third and one as the ball is on the 47-yard line. This is uh, a situation with a guy like Harris that just inches away. Probably going to see something like a quarterback sneak when you're, when you're that close. Or it's a situation maybe you're in four-down territory when it's this close. A little play action to go deep, especially with that many receivers, which you've got the receivers split out wide like that. And they've only got four down linemen. There look like there are gaps there. The sneak is a, a good option. Todd Hudson, the lone setback, and the play action fake, and they are going to pass. Harris looking for a receiver, and he's got one. That one, oh, it looks like almost intercepted. Number two, Tyrone Ram almost had a handle on it. He tipped it up. That one nearly intercepted by number 15. Todd Davis, Todd Davis. really, the free safety coming over in coverage. It's kind of a tough throw, and that's the situation. You've got the defensive backs ready for it. Will Union go? We said it might be four down territory, fourth and, and just inches. It says one, but that's just inches. You saw the play action right there. Not a bad idea to try and go deep. Here they've come out with a big wide set. You think maybe, but they've got blitzing linebackers coming up, and there's the quarterback sneak that we thought we'd see a play before. So, hey, we get something right, John Lewis. And finally, we get something right. Of course, uh, looks like uh, this will bring up first down now, the quarterback sneak. You called it right, Chip Tillett. 
And Cumberland College, they're uh, bending a little bit here on defense, and they're wanting, they need a defensive stop again. And that brings up first down. You know, Coach Woolham is not a conservative coach. He will pull out all the stops, flea flickers, fakes. That really not that outrageous of a call. You're fourth and in inches at midfield when you've got a big quarterback like Harris and a, a big offensive line, which they do have. That's an easy play. More backyard ball. They got four wide receivers. Harris in the shotgun. He rolls out, looking, looking, and he's got Todd Hudson again, and he is knocked out, but that's still a first down as Union College. Boy, I tell you what, they're like Sherman to the sea. They keep on marching. He's leveled by the strong safety, Donnie Wright. Played for Jenkins High School. He's a senior. He said each year this rivalry keeps building and building. Talk to him on Thursday. When he first came in, he said he, he didn't really realize how big of a game it was. Now he realizes he wants to win this game. But so far, Union has marched it down. Harris is going to go under center now. And he may try to pick on the cornerbacks. Cumberland College has freshman cornerbacks out there. That's a short run that goes for very little, but uh, this is going to be something that we really need to look for. Of course, as we said, Union College is going to pass the ball, but Cumberland College, they have uh, Mark Davis at cornerback, who's a freshman out of Nashville. They have Shane Ashby at cornerback, a freshman out of Nashville. A lot. Also, Dante Sweat, a cornerback, a uh, sophomore. So a lot of young, uh, in, young players in the secondary, and that could be a problem for Cumberland College. The defensive line, though, steps up there and stops the run. They hadn't done much of stopping either the run or the pass so far. That's what they need. You're down the, the territory where you could get a field goal. A little bit of a scramble, and Crenshaw again. And Number 97, Tony Irvin, their leading tackler. He comes up with the stop. He's one of the better players all Mid-South Conference, but it's another first down. And, and, John, that's one of the dangerous things about an offense like this. You spread out the wide receivers, but you've always got those backs who can stay in and block or run out and release into the pass pattern, and they're virtually uncovered. And when they are covered, they're going to be covered by a linebacker, and it's definitely a, a speed advantage to the back. It's a safety valve, but it, it's working. Yeah, safety valve is a term a lot of them don't like, but you know what? That's exactly what it is, and when it works, you just got to go ahead and accept the label of safety valve. Well, this time Harris will be under center again. The handoff, the fake to Todd Hudson. He's looking to pass here, and oh, that one goes just out of the hands of John Burgos. And boy, he really got nailed there <laughs> by number seven, Dante Sweat, the sophomore out of Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh, that's a wide receiver's nightmare. You have to go up. You know you're going to get hit. It goes through his hands to throw a little bit high. Really, the, only the second bad throw he made. The other one, a near interception there. But he uh, he paid for that a little bit. That's the defensive back stream, though. That's right. Well, Burgos was once a defensive back. He was moved to wide receiver. The sophomore had a right knee sprain against North uh, Greenville last week, but he is back in action today. Union has moved their offensive and defensive personnel all around this year. We've yet to see a reception by Sean Woolham, the former quarterback. There's the option pitch, though. They do a good job stopping that. That's out to Todd Hudson. I don't know. Hard to tell from our vantage point here. Chad Price, the linebacker, comes out. He was the one to make the first hit and stop them. And they've done a good job stopping the run the last two times. So that will bring up, looks like third down. Harris going back. Third and 11. The ball now on the 15-yard line. That brings up third and eight now we have. But, uh, Chip, boy, I tell you what, we talked about Union and their offense, and what can we say? They've, uh, they've done their job today, and this is a different Union than what we saw earlier in the season. Certainly a different Union. This, this is a play where Cumberland's defense would like to step up and stop them. He but gets down to the 10, does Burgos, but he is dropped there, and they will not get the first down. So that brings up fourth down, and now a decision for Coach Tuck Willem. Do you go ahead and go for the chip shot field goal? Or you do, go, do you go ahead and trust your offense enough that they've done so well so far? Or do you go ahead and trust it to punch it in for a touchdown? Fourth and three. Wouldn't be surprised to see Tuck Woolham go for the field goal in this kind of situation. Well, it and looks like we've got a timeout. So we'll take a break here. And Union, they're on the march, but they've got fourth down and a decision to make. It's 7-0. best-selling car in America, and I've always wanted one. Now's the time to make it happen. During your Toyota dealer's premier sales event, you can lease a 98 Camry for just $2.59 a month. Your Toyota dealer has a way with numbers like Toyota has a way with quality. No wonder Camry's number one. I'm so. Well, get going then. This special Camry lease ends November 3rd. See your Toyota dealer. He's there to help you get more car for less. Every day. Today at the Kentucky Lottery's Powerball Development Lab, a ball of extraordinary proportions has escaped. 
we were increasing the minimum jackpot to $10 million and adding a cash option when it overpowered us and broke through the wall. The rogue ball has left a trail across the state. Dr. Newby has this advice for anyone encountering the ball. Play it. <laughs> new Powerball, $10 million minimum jackpot and a new option to take cash. Somebody's going to win. Might as well be you. Well, we're back, and it looks like Chris Harris, the quarterback, is going to try to punch it in. Fourth and three, 547 left in the first quarter, and they're going to go for the first down. That's number 28 in motion. And it looks like he is going to, uh, he was the intended receiver there. That was number 28, John Burgos, but no luck on fourth down. So Cumberland College takes over on downs, but you cannot blame Tuck Woolham for the call because the offense has been so effective so far. That's a big stop, though, for Cumberland College. Union really driving down on them. They stopped them. No points. The flip side of that, they do have some pretty bad field position to score themselves 90 or so yards to get into the end zone. Another reason why kicking at this college level is not a given. That would be a, a, a pretty short field goal, but kicking game has played a key role in all the in the last four games here. It's decided the, the victor, and they will give the ball back to Freeman. No decision there. That's right. He is taken out of bounds there by Anthony Patrick, the senior out of Hazard. He played at Nod County Central for Coach Jay Cobb, and a minimal gain on that one, if gain at all. Over the past four years, last year, of course, Indians miss an extra point, lose by one point. The year before that, two years ago here at Birchnow Field, Jeremy Majeski, Magic, the NAIA All-American, a 25-yard field goal, 12 seconds to play, caps a 15-point rally for Union. They win it by a point. Year before that, Jeremy Majeski missed three field goals. Union loses by a field goal. Year before that, it was another field goal by Cumberland that won it. They the do a good job wrapping up number 24, uh, that that is pitch. Reggie Sutton. Yeah, the pitch again to uh, Randy Freeman and uh, nowhere going on that one. Reggie Sutton is really their leader on defense, John. He, uh, he's part of a, a really good defense. He's one of the returners from their last year's squad and, and really a fantastic unit. The defensive line, they've got Keith Fields back. Arthur Carter has switched now. He is down defensive line, and their secondary is really second to none in NAIA. You've got some great people back there. John Fay, if he gets a pick today, he becomes Union College's all-time leading interception guy. But so far, they're not throwing the ball enough to give no. him a chance. Third and four, 456 left. This is the pitch again to Freeman. Boy, they've really called his number all day long. He breaks a couple of tackles, still looking for a gain, but he is taken out of bounds, wrestled out, and that could bring up fourth down. See where they measured that. He may have gotten outside and gotten the first down, and he does. Oh, yeah, he's got the first down, so good call, Chip. 443 left in the first quarter. And Cumberland College trying to sustain a drive of their own. He didn't have it initially. The defense did a good job of making him string it out, but he was able to turn the corner there and get around for the first down yardage. And that shows not only is he a bruising running back, but he's got a little bit of speed there, a threat to go from anywhere on the field, and they're going to keep handing the ball to him. Well, we're, Wiggins this time is going to run out of the shotgun, so we'll see what happens here. He's back to pass. Got some pressure. He does. Now he's going to have to just tuck it and run, and he does a good job. He is up to the 50-yard line before he's tackled. Boy, that one was uh, something out of nothing. Patrick Wiggins was absolutely in trouble, but the freshman makes a good senior decision. He tucks and runs, and, boy, he's almost into uh, to Union College territory. Just a, a great individual effort by Wiggins. He was feeling pressure from the left side. He's able to spin around, and the – Union DBs had good coverage. He had nowhere to throw the ball. What he did have was a little lane to run in. Does a good job getting the ball out to midfield, and that's a big gain. Gives Cumberland a little bit of momentum here. That's right, something they've needed. They're going to run out of the eye this time. Randy Freeman dotting the eye. It's Chris Morrison there. And it's going to be Randy Freeman. He's going to get the uh, handoff there. Breaks a couple of tackles, reverses its field, runs down the sideline before he's taken out of bounds there by number 22. That's Don Williams, the cornerback out of LaGrange, Georgia. I tell you what, John, that's the second time Randall Cobb has had a, a shot at him. It's the second time he's eluded him. Just some great moves, good balance, good center of gravity, able to get out of the, the trouble there in the backfield because he turned nothing into something there. And uh, that seems to be the uh, story of this drive for Cumberland College. Patrick Wiggins uh, trying to get the troops rallied here. Brings up second and two, 327 clock running in the first quarter. This is uh, Chris Morrison dotting the eye this time. Jeremy Simpson also in the backfield. And looks like Union jumped off sides there. We'll see if they were drawn. 
and the uh, flag looks like it was thrown Union's way, so could be offsides. Referee Keith Morgan will help us out with this. Dead ball, encroachment on the defense, five-yard penalty. And it was indeed offsides, encroachment on the defense. Now we'll give Cumberland College a first down here, first penalty of the game. And a relatively uh, mistake-free game so far. So far, but uh, as you can imagine, uh, Tuck Woolham kind of shaking his head down there. Kind of a superstitious coach he is. We'll talk about that a little bit later. He is uh, wearing the same pants that he wore in North Greenville's win last week. And uh, also, he got a bag of pretzels, and he won the game uh, with, after, after eating the pretzels. So, of course, he got another bag of pretzels this week, hoping for a win. This is Chris Morrison hoping for a first down run, and he breaks a tackle, and he's got the first down before he's run out of bounds there. It was Andre Washington, the linebacker, on the play. Tuck is not happy with his defense right now. They did a, such a great job stopping Cumberland on the first drive. He's trying to exhort his defense to, to do a little better, and Cumberland having some success on the ground now, first with Freeman and now with number 33. So a Tuck hoping the superstition will pay off, but right now what's paying off is Cumberland College offense. The I seems to be su successful enough that they're going to run it out again. It's Chris Morrison dotting the I this time. Patrick Wiggins, the freshman who moved from defensive back. He is under center as quarterback. The handoff now, this one to Jeremy Simpson, the uh, former Mr. Football, and that one's close to a first down. We'll see what happens here. 2.45, the clock's still running. Let's I tell you what, this is an important drive for Cumberland because despite the fact that Union has moved the ball well, they go down and score. This is a tie ball game. Union elects not to kick a field goal early. That may come back to haunt them a little later on. Usually the, the safe bet is to, to go for the field goal, go for the points in the first half and just put them on the board, but no field goals are a gimme at, at this level. Not at all. The ball on the uh, far side of the field, they bring out the change. Looks like it's going to be short. Yep, they got it. Oh, they just got it. it. All right. By so about half the length. As we said, it's uh, on the far side of the field. Good call there. Glad you got your contacts in today, Chip Taylor. Tuck having a talk there with, uh, Patrick, or with uh, Chris Harris. Hoping to get this offense moving again, but right now it's the defense that is Union College concerned. That's an endorsement for Dr. Faggot as my eye doctor. <laughs> Haven't gotten new contacts in about two years, but these ones seem to work pretty well. The eye is so successful, they're going to do it again. It looks like the rain may be getting ready to fall, but it looks like Chris Morrison is going to get the handoff here. He pushes his way up and close to first down yardage again. This one on the 20-yard line, Chris Harrison. I have Morrison on my chart. That should be Chris Harrison, not to be confused with number three Chris Harrison of UK basketball fame. Well, I, I don't know where Chris Harrison is these days. He's not coaching anywhere. We haven't heard from him in a while. Maybe he's a tailback now. But uh, this Chris Harrison is, is a little bit bigger and more beefy than the other Chris Harrison. And I don't a, think he can shoot the three. I don't think Chris Harrison of UK fame is 6'0", 195. No, and this is, Chris Harrison is not from Tallsboro High School in Kentucky, which actually no longer exists. This is Wiggins under center again, and the eye continues to be the go-to, but that's Randy Freeman getting wrapped up by Derek Tucker, the strong safety. And boy, that's not what Cumberland College needs. Well, that's that what, brings up third down. That's what Union wants. They got the ball close down to the first down. On first down, second down, somebody comes up and makes a play, and that's what you've got to do when they're getting down near scoring territory. So Freeman loses... Three yards on that play, brings up third and six. The ball on the 23, 115, the clock running, still left in the first quarter. Cumberland will go back to the shotgun, maybe throw a little. This not quite the kind of shotgun that Union runs, a little bit more conservative. Just two wideouts have the two backs. They split out into the flat. Wiggins in trouble, and he is taken down. That is number 52, Randall Cobb out of Bear Branch, Kentucky. He, he has one he, and a half sacks this year, make it two and a half. He didn't miss that time, no he, problems he getting Wiggins down. 6'2", 260. Randall Tex Cobb, they call him. And boy, he was in on that, on that sack, the big guy out of Leslie County, Kentucky. They got a tremendous push out of their defensive line there. Nothing they could really do. Of course, when you put four guys out into the pass pattern, you tend to happen if you don't have the protection, and they will punt. Got to see what job the punter does. And this is Tony Irvin, the linebacker. He also does the punting for them, see if he can corner them in. And, and it looks like it will go out of the end zone. So that will be a touchback with 18 seconds left in the first quarter. And Union College with another chance to drive down the field. Good job to the defense of Union College of holding off what it looked like a great Cumberland march. 
Uh, the quarterback there with the uh, big run up to uh, Union College territory, but uh, Union hangs tough. That's a situation where you really could have backed Union up. They really only net 13 yards on the punt. You, you'd like to see a little bit more put them down deeper because Union has shown the ability to move the ball so far. They've already taken one 80-yard scoring drive. They've driven the other one down inside the 20, came away empty after a fourth down play. See if they can get something else going here with 18 seconds left in this first quarter of play. So Chris Harris here looking to pass, and he's got just through the hands there. Tyrone, Tyrone Ram Ram. almost made that catch. Beautiful loft up, put a little bit of air on that ball, and he almost got it through his hands. Some good coverage there. He couldn't really see the ball as well as he wanted. Just we'll a quick a second down. Just a quick sideline there to uh, Tyrone Rim, but uh, I can imagine that Union College will continue to pass. So successful for them in that first drive. 7-0 Union leads here. 13 seconds now left in the first quarter. Second and 10 ball on the 20-yard line. You talk about the offense last year. He was their leading receiver coming into the year with, I believe, 19 receptions. Sean Woolham already has 16 receptions in just three games, so it tells you what kind of offense they've been running lately. Harris, the, uh, looking for Todd Hudson again. They dropped the ball there on the uh, stop there was Donnie Wright, now the preseason all-conference strong safety. A little better coverage now, and Union is in a very dangerous situation of having the ball for 17 or 18 seconds and going three and out. Certainly, if you're Dan Haley in the Cumberland College defense, that's exactly what you want. Get the ball back as soon as you can and get your offense back on the field because you're seeing a little bit of a momentum shift. This is a big third down because Union has not been able to move the ball so far on first and second down. Third and ten, Todd Hudson in motion. That is the pitch out to Dwayne Crenshaw, and he is down, but not enough for the uh, first down. Looks like he is just over the 30-yard line. That may be that first may down bring yardage. Up first down. They're going to bring out the chains and measure it. Depends on the spot, but it looks like they're going to give it to him. And just a great job by Crenshaw. The big bruising running back takes on Tony Irvin and the defensive back falls forward for the first down. That is the end of the first quarter, John Lewis. Union up seven to nothing. And I think Rich Johnson is around here somewhere. Let's head down to him on the field. Rich, what do you have for us? Well, I think the rain is beginning to pick up. A light drizzle beginning to fall. Union's been able to move the ball in their first two possessions. Their first drive, Chris Harris with a 10-yard touchdown run. The second time they had the ball, they drive down, go, uh, turn, it over on, turn it over on fourth down. Uh, you know, so far they've had 13 passes, nine runs, pretty balanced there. As for Cumberland, they've run the ball 13 times, only had two passes. One of those was a sack. And Randy Freeman, in the second drive of the game, he was able to go over 1,000 yards for this season. But then Cumberland, you know, an 11-play drive. They drive down the field, but Union was able to stop them with that big sack. We were able to take over. They now have the ball, and Union leading 7-0 at the end of the first quarter. Rich Johnson, thank you very much. Hope you have a raincoat down there. It doesn't look like you're, you're prepared yet, but hopefully the rain will hold off. And like you say, a light, light rain starting to fall. And certainly that will affect the passing game of Union a little bit. It, if that would happen, you've got to think advantage to Cumberland with their rushing game. But so far, that's why they may be selected to, to get the ball first to put the first points on the board. This series has not seen a 7 nothing final since way back in 1990 when Cumberland won 7 nothing at Finney Legion Field in Williamsburg when Cumberland scored on the very first drive of the game. Scott Hamilton, a 14-yard TD run, the only score. Maybe we'll see something like that again today. Maybe we won't. Well, we'll see what happens here. This is Chris Harris, and he is looking to pass. He's got a receipt. Oh, that was just good coverage there. That was uh, number 80 out there looking to uh, get the reception. Quali Rolak, but uh, good coverage there from the uh, young defensive backs, Shane Ashby and Dante Sweat. Well, they went deep. And that Todd ball. Davis, I'm sorry. He really, really didn't have a chance to, to get that ball. And that's what you want to do if you're a quarterback, if you're trying to throw the deep ball, throw it where it can't be intercepted and only your receiver can get a job at it. They didn't really have a shot at that one. A little bit overthrown, a little deep, but good coverage. He was right there on the coverage. It would have been hard to complete that pass. Chris Harris under center again. Four wide outs they're showing right here. The lone setback is number 38, Dwayne Crenshaw, and he gets the pitch, and he has stopped right about the, uh, maybe even behind the line of scrimmage, well, right on the line of scrimmage. So that brings up third and 10 with the ball on the 30, on the 30, 14, 40 left well they've the had quarter. good success running Crenshaw on the ground four carries for 21 yards along of 10 an average of 5.3 in the first quarter 
And I tell you what, if when you can average 5.3 yards a rush, that's pretty good. Anything over 4.2 is usually considered above average. And they've done a good job rushing the ball. Todd Hudson averaging 8.7 yards. They've been giving Crenshaw the bulk of the work lately. Hudson goes into motion, and this is Harris, look, or yes, Harris looking to pass. And he's got Hudson. Oh, that one just out of his hands. Dante Sweat, give him credit. He got the hand on the ball and knocked that one away. The sophomore out of Bowling Green, Kentucky, was all over that pass from minute one. Well, they're trying to get their, their running back, who's moving out into the slot, into the kind of an H-back position there, trying to run him downfield. They've gone deep twice. They want to see what the Cumberland defense will give them. They haven't been able to do it, and looks like we're going to have a change at quarterback now for the Union Bulldogs. Number 10 has come in. Well, I think they're just going to go ahead and punt this one away. That brought up fourth down, so they go ahead and punt that one, and that one takes uh, not much of a bounce. They go ahead and down that one. So it looks like that uh, Cumberland College, a chance now to answer. They hold tough, and they'll have the ball on about the 25-yard uh, line. Number 10 would have come in. Todd Hudson would have been playing quarterback, but, of course, he's the up back in the punt situation, not actually looking at the down at distance. But with, with Tuck Willem, you never know. They've changed up this offense so many times, you never know if it's going to be a direct snap or whatever. That not really a situation you look at him to fake the ball, not really a whole lot of success throwing deep, and now you've got to think they'll go back to Randy Freeman, who's moved over the 1,000-yard mark already in the, this game. So Patrick Wiggins running under center. The handoff here, that is Jeremy Simpson, and he gets about a yard out of that one. We'll give him a yard after he falls forward. Freeman, their leading rusher his senior season, just like he has been since his freshman season. His freshman year back in 1994, rushed for 580 yards. This is his second 1,000-yard campaign, barring him getting dropped for a lot of losses, which I don't think is going to happen. Back in 1995, his other 1,000-yard season, 1,090 yards, his best season so far last year. 155 rushes for 686 attempts. He had some injuries there last year. This year, a little banged up last week, but he still played. That's why he's the Mid-South Conference Player of the Week this week. He's already gone over the 1,000-yard mark for the season. He has 34 yards already today and adds some more there, about eight or nine more. Andre Washington on the stop there off the uh, draw. Randy Freeman, he has answered the call today, and he, we figured he would. Of course, a preseason all-conference pick, as you mentioned, over 1,000 yards for the season already. That brings up first and 10, 13-12 left in the second quarter. Union still leading 7 to nothing, but Cumberland on the move. One reason why, of course, Cumberland wants to run the ball, team rushing defense, Union near the bottom of the Mid-South Conference, giving up 223 yards rushing, and he may be gone on that one. He moves out. Looks if like he can beat number four, which he can't quite get to the outside, but a great run as he picks up 30-plus yards on the carry. Credit Derek Tucker, the strong safety out of LaGrange on the stop because he just saved a touchdown from Randy Freeman. I tell you what, it, Cumberland is doing an impressive job with the running game right now. Union knows what's coming. They just can't stop it. An excellent job while the offensive line, and then Freeman is hitting the hole hard. And just a burst of speed up the sidelines. Really, the only reason he didn't break that is because they had the angle on him, a little bit more room to the sideline, and he would be gone on that play. Ball on the 25-yard line now. It's first and 10. And, of course, Randy Freeman, the leading rusher in Cumberland, or second leading rusher in Cumberland College history. This is Steve Means, and Steve Means business, but he is tackled by a host of Union College Bulldogs. Union College Bulldog defense means business on that play as well. They're getting down into that scoring territory, and it's when you've got to stiffen up and play good defense. 12.30, the clock running, second and 10, ball on the 25. Union leads 7 to nothing. Cumberland College trying to change things now. Union's DBs, they haven't really had to do much coverage. They have had to provide some runs support, some touchdown-saving tackles. John Fay coming up, and the rain looks like it's starting to fall a little bit more now as it becomes more and more overcast. And Cumberland continues to run the ball down the field. This will be a... Uh, this is number 33, Chris Harrison, trying to run around the end there, but nothing happening there. Looked like it was going to be a draw early on. He's pushed out of bounds, second and th or third and seven now. Ball moved up to the 22-yard line. So what happens now? Well, we're in a passing down, and uh, Patrick Wiggins has been semi-successful in doing that. Or do you call Randy Freeman's number again? We'll see what happens. Well, Freeman's had a pretty good job rushing the ball. You may try and switch it up and go with the run here, maybe a little bit of play action, but Freeman looks uh, like they're going to go out of the shotgun. Yeah. Freeman uh, taking a, a much-deserved rest now. This is Wiggins in the shotgun. He is 
flanked to either side by Simpson, but he looks like he is going to pass here. He's looking, and he looks like he's going to have to tuck and run again. Let's see what happens. He is stopped by number 45. That is Wade Davis, the sophomore offensive linebacker from Atlanta, Georgia. And that's going to move the change. That is first and 10 for Union or for Cumberland College. Ball now on the 22-yard line. Patrick Wiggins, just a freshman, but boy, he is making some veteran decisions out there. I tell you what, once again, the coverage was there, but Wiggins is able to, to get past the, the defensive line. They pursued up the field, and he's able to make something happen. Second big run for a first down he's had. The other one a, a little bit longer, but he's also gotten into the rushing column. Out of the eye again. Chris Harrison dotting the eye. Jeremy Simpson behind Wiggins. The pitch now to Harrison. Harrison looking for some room, but he got nothing. Andre Washington again. Of course, Andre had 56 tackles on the year last year, 30 unassisted, and even a sack. He was the man on that one. No gain on that one. And I tell you what, that is why he's knocked Devin Roach out of a starting position. Great pursuit upfield, unblocked, just comes in. He sees the play, smells the pitch outside, and goes and gets him. That's a big loss. We have a penalty, though, on the play, it looks like. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the end of the run, repeat first down. I tell you what, John, they got penalized on that, but they didn't do a very good job holding because they didn't get anything. They lost yardage, and now they're going to be penalized. It looks like Union's going to accept them and move them back, and why not take them out of field goal range? Absolutely. Because you don't want any points on the board. So a decision here for uh, Patrick Wiggins again. He's going to... Go under center. Freeman back in the ball game now. Staring at a first and 20 first there and 20. on the. First and forever. The play action fake to Freeman. Looking for the end zone and out of bounds. The intended receiver was number 27. That's Brandon Duggar, the senior out of Somerset. So that brings up now second and seems like forever, but it's only second and 20. The ball now on the 23-yard line. And uh, you can imagine that maybe they'll hand it off to Freeman, try to get some yardage out of it or they may just fling it for the end zone again. You had nothing to lose on first and 20. No, well, you want to try and get some points out of this, though. Maybe run a short route. They went for everything there, see if they could catch Union's defensive back snapping. They had pretty good coverage, the pass thrown out of the end zone. May look for the inside handoff to Freeman here, try and get some of those yards back, get into field goal range. Set up for the draw play, and that's what happens. Freeman, he is down to the, looks like the inside the 10-yard line there. Still second, and brings up third and 10 now. Buddy got some good yardage. They're certainly back in, in makeable field goal range for their kicker, Mike Donnelly. Of course, Donnelly, a freshman this year, but uh, he's had uh, so, so much success here early on, and they've really had to come to him when it counted. I tell you what, the, the kicking game, like we said, has played a major role in the games the last four seasons. Mike Donnelly talked to him as well on Thursday. He said that's something they stressed when they brought him in as a freshman. We need a kicker that can get the points for us, and they've had good kickers before. They've got another good kicker in Donnelly, but they'd rather get the touchdown right here, third and ten. Three wide receivers they show. Wiggins looking to throw. He's in trouble. He's going to tuck and run again, see what he can get out of it, and he is taken down hard by number 96. That's Ryan Kelly, the freshman out of Corbin, Kentucky. And great we'll mobility, and it looks like he may have another Cumberland College first down. He has done a great job avoiding the pressure. Really, Devin Roach and another player had a shot at him. He just avoided them and has taken it down, and now this is the time of the, the game. You give the ball to Randy Freeman and let him punch it into the end zone. Right, inside the five, so that brings up first and goal. And, uh, yeah, this is the time when you uh, have to say that the uh, defense is looking at Randy Freeman. Although right now they're on the one-yard line. Wiggins has done a lot of the work getting him down here. You might want to go with the sneak, but it looks like they've got a lot of defensive players in there. All the defensive backs up, and they will pitch it out wide. And Randy Freeman picked up a good block there, and he marches on into the end zone. It's 7-6, and boy, what a good block he picked up to just absolutely go in there untouched. I tell you what, Union had everybody bunched up up the middle. They're thinking perhaps quarterback sneak as Wiggins has displayed such mobility, uh, just an excellent athlete. They decide, well, we'll take the easy road and pitch it out wide left, and they do it, and they get the touchdown. So that brings up Mike Donnelly, the man we've talked about earlier for the extra point attempt here. This one is up, and it's good after a little bit of trouble on the snap here. So Cumberland College, thanks to Patrick Wiggins, moves this ball down the field. 
We have a tie score, 9.45 left in the second quarter, and it's 7-7. I tell you what, they, despite the fact that Union has moved the ball offensively, Cumberland has now picked up the momentum. They stopped Union down on the, the fourth and three inside the red zone. Couldn't do anything. Now we're tied, 7-7. Seven seven. It's a whole new ball game, and really an excellent job. Freeman has carried the load a lot on offense, but Wiggins really, not with his passing, but with his running, he had a, some huge runs on that play, two plays, where he got down for the first down yardage, an 11-play, 75-yard drive, 4:15 time of possession, and that ties everything, 7-7 seven seven with Randy Freeman's one-yard touchdown run. So Union, they are set to receive now, looking for another score. They're going to try to answer that touchdown. Back deep to receive is Don Williams, also Todd, Todd Hudson, Hudson and Lloyd Dollar. So names that we have called before are not heard anything yet from Don Williams. We'll see what happens there. This is number 13, Mike Donnelly again. He is going to do all the kicking duties today. Uh, some trouble early on with uh, uh, Donnelly uh, as far as uh, extra points go, but they've really called on him here, a freshman who's uh, had a lot of success uh, here today, and, you know, his father's had a lot of success here earlier in the baseball season. His father has had a tremendous amount of success. Of course, his father is third base coach for the Florida Marlins, and I, I think they've had a pretty good baseball season as they beat the Cleveland Indians four games to three and really one of the more exciting World Series lately. Of course, his father, while he's in the dugout of those games, is calling up on Saturdays to get Cumberland College information. He said he would use Moises Alou's cell phone and call and get game information or listen to WEZ for the... Oh, and there is number 22, Don Williams, their top return man, busts through and a good return all the way out to just shy of the 45-yard line, call it the 44. So a good return for him. We just said we hadn't heard much from Don Williams, but he proves us wrong there. Moving this ball into, uh, trying to get it into uh, Cumberland College territory already. That went on the 44-yard line. Tell you what, that was a good return for Don Williams. Of course, he is a defensive back. Has two interceptions for 58 yards on the year. Kick return so far, Don Williams, one for 26, and that one was at least 26, and they will go under center again now out of the shotgun, not out of the shotgun. Three wide receiver package here. Looking to pass here, and that one just in front of Tyrone Rim. Tyrone Rim wanted to pass interference there. It looked like they might have had a little bit of his arm. The ball maybe not catchable, a little bit wide out of bounds, but a good move to get outside. He was open. A little better pass on the money might have gotten him, but he was looking for a little pass interference there. And uh, Tuck looking for a little pass interference from Mike Black, but uh, <laughs> did not happen. Well, Tuck is one of the more animated coaches you'll ever see. He he gets frustrated. He, he shows his emotions on the field. You know you know exactly what he's thinking. You know whether he's happy or, or sad with you or upset, or he lets you know. Dwayne Crenshaw gets the call here. This one takes him up into Cumberland College territory. He's about at the 48-yard line. Tony Irvin again on the tackle. They're leading tackler, the senior linebacker, right now third on the all-time Cumberland College tackles list. He may move up to second by the end of the year out of Stanford, Kentucky. That'll set up a third down and four ball just shy of the 50-yard line. Nine minutes left here in the second quarter. It's Chris Harris working out of the shotgun here. The fake to the inside handoff. That is down to Todd Hudson. Todd Hudson stopped immediately. That is. And what a great tackle. It looks like it's Donnie Wright. Donnie Wright, of course, uh, we've, caught, we've heard from him before. He was a preseason all-conference pick, and he shows why there. So... Union College forced to punt thanks to the efforts of Donnie Wright. Now this is the kind of situation where you're kind of seeing momentum now shift to Cumberland. Wouldn't be out of the question to see Tuck fake a punt in this kind of situation. He's done it before, he'll do it again, but maybe they can kind of cough and corner the mound with a good punt. Well, we'll see what happens here, fourth and four, and it's going to go ahead and it will be a punt. That one a uh, pretty good one there, going down to about the 20-yard line, and taken down there by Mark Davis, the cornerback, freshman cornerback. So that brings up first down for Cumberland College, and 7-7 the score, 8-0-7 left in the second quarter. Really, the defensive backs of Cumberland College have, have done a good job containing the run game, especially right there. The short pass, they've done a really nice job adjusting to those outlet receivers. They've done a, an excellent job on the wide receivers. Nothing down the field. That's something they wanted to do to keep the ball towards the outside and not let anything down the middle be completed. Now 
they're going to try and pound the ball out again, the inside handoff. That's right. That uh, The call looked like, it looked like uh, Steve Means. We'll have to get a call on that. He's tackled by a host of people there. Actually, that was Jeremy Simpson, number 34, not number 41. So Jeremy Simpson stopped immediately at the line of scrimmage. That brings up second and 10, 7.50. The clock keeps on ticking here in the second quarter. Jeremy Simpson with a, a few carries now in the first quarter, two carries for eight yards, four per carry average. I can even do the math on that one. <laughs> so Patrick Wiggins now under center, running out of the eye again. It's Randy Freeman dotting the eye. It's the option pitch. And he, he is will taken keep it. down there on the uh, option. Stop by, looks like Don Williams on the stop there. Saw Don Williams with a, a great kickoff return before setting up Union in, in excellent field position. He comes up from the defensive back position and makes a good stop. Wiggins has done a, a nice job eluding tacklers for Union, but he doesn't elude Don Williams right there. We're seeing two freshmen out here making pretty good decisions. Of course, Don Williams, he's almost inescapable as St. Joe's last season when Don Williams racked up nine tackles against them. Patrick Wiggins again working under center, out of the eye. Randy Freeman again dots the eye, but Wiggins is going to pass. He's going to try to, but he is being chased out by Arthur Carter. He gets the pass off, and what a catch there by number 27. And he is looking to run it down, down past the 40-yard line. That is Brandon Duggar. And, and I tell you what, that's a, a great job, but maybe we've seen some sort of flag come out. Well, it appears that they're marching back to the line of scrimmage. I don't see the flag. Uh, it's the kind of a situation where when the quarterback runs around for so long, you're going to get some kind of holding penalty on him. We do see the flag now in the defensive backfield. Illegal use of the hands on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, repeat third down. And that is a killer penalty for Cumberland College. I should say offensive. It seems like they've had a couple of really good runs there. And uh, but it just what happens when Patrick Wiggins gets in trouble? That the pass and called all the way back and a little bit more after the uh, penalty. Well, that's the that's the problem when you have a quarterback scrambling like that. You're not sure if he's going to run. You're not sure if he's going to pass because he's taken off and run so many times before. Sometimes offensive linemen will use their hands illegally. They will hold and and that one gets called back. That was a great game. But Wiggins again showing his aloof elusiveness. Uh,